my advice would be if you're thinking about it and you even think you want to do it, then you definitely want to do it or you wouldn't be thinking about it. So just go ahead and make that first step. Time is going to pass anyway. everybody, I am Melissa Forzia of Take the Donut, here to help you get inspiration and get donuts. I'm a motivational keynote speaker, and today I'm bringing you an inspirational Take the Donut interview with Missy Testerman, who is the 2024 National Teacher of the Year and currently works as an ESL specialist at Rogersville City School in Rogersville, Tennessee. Welcome, Missy. Hey, thank you for having me today, Melissa. Oh, I'm so glad to talk with you. But before we talk about anything more serious, I have to ask, what's your favorite donut? So I may be a little unusual in this, but I'm not the biggest fan of donuts. Okay. But there is a donut truck in my area that comes around. And if you don't like traditional donuts, it's okay. Because they will take that same piece of fried bread goodness and dip it in butter and salt it. And it's wonderful. They call it a pretzel donut and it's fabulous. <laughs> oh, interesting. But it's it's just the flavors are like pretzel. Yes. Cool. It's just salty rather than sweet. Yes. Do you remember the name of the donut truck? I do not, unfortunately. Okay. Well, it it okay. only comes here like every three or four months. You know, it's one of those little nomadic thing that goes around from parking lot to parking lot. But their their pretzel donuts are wonderful. Okay, everybody, be on the lookout if you're in Missy's area. <laughs> well, I said just a little bit about you up front, but tell us more about yourself. What should we know about you? So I have grown up and taught in the same really small town in rural East Tennessee for, I've taught for 32 years. Um, I grew up here, like I mentioned before, so I've lived my entire area in this little town where everyone knows everyone and everything about them. I taught in the general ed classroom for 30 years. I was a first and second grade teacher, and two years ago, I crossed over into teaching. In Tennessee, we call it English as a second language, even though that's actually a misnomer. Some of my students are learning English as their third or fourth language, so I prefer the term multilingual, but in Tennessee, it's referred to as ESL, so I started that two years ago and absolutely love it. Yeah, now that you say that, I think that's what the program was called when I was in school too. So it sounds like they've never changed the nomenclature of it. Yes. Yeah. Well, you know, for those who are wondering what all this donut stuff is about, let me reset that for you. So take the donut for me is another way of saying carpe diem. It's all, it all comes from this strange thing that happened to me in college where I left an actual donut on the table but it became this object lesson for me and what it looks like to leave opportunities behind. So I don't want to do that anymore. I want to take the donut, take those opportunities. I'll link a video here for those who haven't heard that one before, but basically this conversation is all about going after opportunity in life, going after goals and what that looks like practically speaking day to day. So let me ask you this, how are you with going after goals? What is that process like for you? Melissa, I'm actually pretty highly motivated once I decide I want to do something. It's just a matter of developing a plan and, and doing it. I'm, I guess, the typical first oldest bossy child who once I decide that's what I'm going to do, that's what I'm going to do. Okay, that sounds fair. <laughs> I love it. So going after goals, not difficult for you. If it's something that takes a lot of effort or a lot of time to get there, what keeps you motivated in that process? It sounds like you're able to get started pretty, pretty easily, but what keeps you motivated? Sure. So the staying motivated part is, is the hard part, you know, in terms of, you know, education, that part is a little easier for me. I think when you put kids at the center of everything you do, you know, there's always a motivation there. Um, in terms of like 
eating correctly, that's sometimes a bit more challenging. I know what to do doesn't mean that I always, always do it. But but you're correct. Staying motivated is is the entire challenge. You, a lot of times, I think it's easier to set the goal and then to think of it that you're moving, you know, inches or feet or yards toward the goal and reevaluate your progress as as you're making it. And most of the time you'll see it. You've made see that you've made it a lot farther than you thought you were going to. And that's usually for most people enough motivation to keep going. Mm. You know, that might end up being the answer to this question as well. But do you have any particular brand of challenge that just keeps coming up for you? Like no matter what opportunity you're going after, what is the Achilles heel that always seems to come up for you? Probably trying to do too many things. Um, I think a lot of us are are guilty of that. You you have a lot of goals and you want to reach all of those. And then you see someone that needs help with their goals. So for a minute, you get stunted helping someone else with, with their project, their goal. And then pretty soon your plate is so incredibly full of so many things that it's hard to kind of all, all balance that. For me, that's a real struggle um is 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 saying no and meaning it I say it a lot and then I watch you know people get started I sense that they're struggling and you know I have this innate feeling that I'm supposed to be a fixer and sometimes when you have that personality trait though you're not really helping others if if you are always rescuing someone and it's the same particular someone you're not really helping that person be independent and learn how to chase their own goals you're just kind of enabling them to realize that you're going to catch them which can be a good thing but for me a lot of times I feel like that people would be better served if I kind of backed off and let them do things more on their own than me trying to fix it for them. That's interesting. And it must be particularly challenging given your profession, you know, that people, you know, where do you, where is that line of when it's too much and when it's, you know, not enough and when it's exactly right, you know, you're, you're in a job where people are looking for your help. So it's, it's, it's like, you know, trying to find where that balance is professionally and personally must be incredibly difficult. Absolutely. And, and the weird thing is I feel like I do a much better job of encouraging and fostering independence and um, intrinsic motivation in children than I do adults. I don't know if it's because I think, well, it's too late for you. <laughs> I'll just help you. But, you know, kids, I'm, I'm of the opinion you need to learn to to do this. I'll support you and, and help you through and then take the supports away as you don't need it. But for me, the rescuing tends to come more with, with adults than children, I guess, because I understand that children, you know, need so many abilities to do things on their own because, you know, that's that's our whole goal is to help them grow into functional adults who can do things on their own. Mm, so interesting. You know, I'm curious how you'll answer this one. If you think back across your life, what would you say is the biggest donut you've ever taken? Biggest opportunity? It could be recent, could be long past. What comes to mind for you? Well, definitely personally would be parenting because it never ends. <laughs> no matter how old they get, you just worry a little more in, in different ways. Um, professionally, many things, but probably going back to school to add my English as a second language endorsement. I was 51 years old. So not the typical age of, of someone who decides like to do this. And, you know, it was a lot of it was unfamiliar to me. I came out of a out of college long before there were all of these elect chronic learning platforms that you had to use to submit things. So I was definitely a digital immigrant and not a native. So that was a bit of a challenge, but I would have never seen myself doing that at my age, to be completely honest. But in my case, there was a need for it. Our school's English as a second language teacher was moving. She had always um, been not just those the teacher for those students, but she was a resource for their families. 
I had been the teacher who had had them in my classroom as first and second graders. And I loved them. I cared for them. I felt very um, vested in their in their families. And so for me, that was the motivation to decide to do that at age 51. I'm not sure if you would have told me five years ago, 10 years ago, you're going to do this. I would have been like, there's absolutely no way I'm going to do that when I'm that old. But but I did, and I'm very, very thankful that I did as well. That's so inspiring to hear. And who knows what you'll do moving forward, right? I mean, it's just the beginning in some ways. So, you know, with that in mind, like, is there a donut that you're trying to take right now? Is there anything happening currently? Well, right now, because it's my year of service as the National Teacher of the Year, I have the very distinct privilege of getting to travel around our beautiful country and talk to groups of teachers and also education stakeholders. And what I most want to do over this year is number one, to help teachers find their voices and to allow them to see that they are the experts. The experts are not out, you know, in some hidden spot. Our teachers are the experts. They are the ones doing the work in the classroom. They know what works and what doesn't work. They can forecast problems. Um, long before um, problems even arise. And with our education stakeholder groups, I hope I just bring a really raw honesty of this is what teaching is like, because a lot of people think that they understand what teaching is like because they've been a student. But when you're the teacher and you've been a teacher for a long time, it's a whole different angle of that, that perspective. Oh, it's beautifully said. It sounds like such a big initiative that you're doing right now. There may be people who are listening to this who have a donut of their own they'd like to take. They're just not sure what the way forward is. So let's sprinkle some encouragement. And what would you say to those people who they know there's something that they want to do or need to do? They're just not sure what the next step is. My advice would be if you're thinking about it and you even think you want to do it, then you definitely want to do it or you wouldn't be thinking about it. So just go ahead and make that first step. Time is going to pass anyway. You know, if you're older like I was and it's something you want to do in five years, you're going to be the same age, regardless if you take the donut or you don't, you're going to age anyway. So if it's something that you want to do, just go ahead and take that first step. And I think a lot of times we over calculate the risk of doing something new. And we just assume every bad thing is going to fall into place to make it a failure. When the reality is that that's probably not going to happen. And if it does, the worst thing that could happen is that you tried and it didn't work that time. It doesn't even mean that you're finished and it's not going to work out the next time. You just learn from that, get up and and keep going. That's absolutely beautifully said. So many great nuggets in there for everybody. Now, if people wanna find you, or follow you on this journey that you're on, especially this year, where can they find you? Sure. So my social media platforms are X. I'm on X. Just search my name. I just use use my name. Um, I'm on X, LinkedIn, and also on Instagram. Perfect. And I'll be sure to put some links in the description for you so people can find you more easily. And, you know, everybody, make sure to check out those resources. And if you liked this video, be sure to like and subscribe. There's all kinds of other interesting interviews still to come to keep you inspired and motivated. But in the meantime, thank you so much, Missy, for joining me, for talking with all of us about going after opportunity and sharing your thoughts on that. Sure. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate you. And I'm excited to see what you have coming forward as well. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. (laughs) Okay, everybody, you know what to do. Go out there, get inspiration and get donuts. Bye, everybody.